Welcome to a wild and weird Woody Wednesday. It is the podcast daily. It is Bill Landis. I am Austin Ward. I just have this odd feeling, Bill. Like you go into a press conference and you think, man, there's been so much going on for Ohio State. A lot of offseason stuff to talk about. We broke it down on a talking Tuesday yesterday. And I just like, with the Bill O'Brien saga being unsettled, it feels like it's going to overshadow the whole deal. And that's, that's an uncomfortable feeling going into the press conference because you got to talk about the news of the day, but the news of the last six weeks is pretty relevant too. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's odd. Um, <clears throat> and I guess we'll see the press conferences at 930 on Wednesday morning. So maybe something comes out before then, but that, it sort of feels unlikely given some of the reporting around the Boston College search. I, you know, I think we're expecting interviews for that job to continue through Wednesday and probably not hear anything about it until the weekend. So like Ryan Day, uh, we're assuming is going to have to stand up there and answer hypothetical questions about <laughs> potentially losing uh, his offensive coordinator. So it's, it's, it is, it's odd. Um, it's, it's, there have been some weird press conferences, and I think we'll we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, but this is one of, one of the stranger ones, which makes sense because it's it's not something you see all the time in college football. One where a coach decides to leave the time that Jeff Halfley left, um, and then to do it to go take a coordinator job rather than be a head coach in college, and then two like have a guy who's only been in a spot for I don't know we're, we're still like two weeks I guess now with Bill O'Brien, maybe a little more than two weeks, um, being considered for another job. To potentially leave already it's, it's very it's very strange and uh yeah you're right it will it will certainly overshadow a lot um of what we could talk about with brian day uh later today my hope is that it does not take up the entire a lot of time but i think it will take up a large chunk of it for sure yeah i, I mean the more i thought about it after our previous conversation it was like i really feel like this is gonna be half the time or more and i understand why and i'm not suggesting hey let's get together beforehand and let's put a cap on the number of conversations that we can have because like there's a lot of offshoots that include if Bill Bryant Bill O'Brien is still the offensive coordinator for Ohio State Ryan yeah. Day's decision making process handling of the offense play calling duties like and if I add those and include that into hey like did you set a deadline for Bill O'Brien to decide which I think would be a fair thing to do although probably doesn't have to do that because Boston College isn't going to let this thing go on forever because they need a head coach to get in and get started for spring ball in March. Um, like I, I understand that all those questions are fair and like we have to keep the ball rolling to talk about the future for Ohio State's program. But like when I called it weird and, and I bounced this idea off of you, like I'm <clears throat> I'm excluding stuff like suspensions or firings or like real world <clears throat> issues that are facing like I'm 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 excluding those. I'm talking about like pending ongoing unexpected surprises that are unresolved. Like if you made a decision if like you go in and you know that Chase Young is going to be suspended for NCA rules that are unclear and probably didn't actually like benefit anybody. All right, mm -hmm. well at least there was a decision made and then the next step is well how are you going to handle that if you don't have chase young for the next couple of weeks and like when did you learn about this and how do you handle like that stuff is resolved this like i'm expecting later on today wednesday morning for it to be an unresolved situation that's a pretty big deal for ohio state it is uh before i i respond to that I, you just you said something that made me want to look something up and it has nothing to do with ohio state so i apologize for the tangent but Boston College last year started spring practice on March 3rd, and mm. it is currently February 7th, and they don't have a head coach. What are they? Yeah, what are they doing? <laughs> what are they? I have no idea what they're doing. Is their is there strength coach still there just being like, well, these are the workouts that we were going to do, and like you guys are still here. You're not in the transfer portal, so let's just prepare uh, as if we're going to play and have a coach soon. Like. Imagine that. Like it's weirder for Boston College than it is for Ohio State. I'll definitely freely admit that part. But man, like 
I don't cover Boston College. I don't have to worry about that part. <laughs> it's true. Although there, I think there is an Ohio State tie to this because isn't Phil Matus their head their head strength coach? Yeah, that's right. There's yeah. and there's Ohio State ties all over the place because <laughs> Jeff Happy left. <laughs> Al Washington is one of the other candidates who I believe had uh, an in person interview on Tuesday as well for this spot with Boston College. Like it is all over the place. Yeah. So anyway, back to the 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 topic at hand that people care about. Um. I think it's just like, I don't, we're talking about it a lot because it's like kind of the only thing happening and it is interesting and obviously it will have an impact on Ohio State um, if Phil O'Brien decides to leave and Ryan Day has to go back to the drawing board. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't want the fixation on it to come off as like panic because I'm not really panicked. I'm just like intrigued more than anything that I am panicked about it. Um, But this has been a reminder that like even when things are going really well at Ohio State, they're still like never all the way normal. <laughs> like there's always like something uh like on the fringes or even more in your face, like this is that's like in the back of your mind, like, yeah, but what about this thing over here? Like, all this is all this is great, but what about this thing over here? And this is this is going to be you and I were talking about this before we were started recording. So Ryan Day did his stuff in Dallas, but the last three press conferences he's done in the Woody. Well, like including today's on, on Wednesdays. So this one, the signing day one in late December, and uh, the one I guess it was the Sunday after the Mich- or after, yeah the after the Michigan selection, game, right? Selection Sunday. Selection yep. Sunday, like all were very strange. Um, the sun, the selection Sunday one because we were like asking like, hey, is Kyle McCord your quarterback? And he's like, I think so. And then the next day, Kyle McCord transferred. Um, the one in late December, we're sitting there in the room with him unsure of whether or not jeremiah smith and edrick houston are going to sign with ohio state and then ryan day like did his little f- like fainting thing um at the podium <laughs> that i actually think like was not predetermined i think that was a genuine human response from ryan day when they found out that jeremiah smith was in fact uh going to go to ohio state but it was like we're trying to like dance around that and ask questions about it even after the news was out that he had committed we still couldn't ask him about it because he hadn't officially signed it didn't sign until like 7 30 that night so like that was strange and now this one we're going to be like asking what ifs about losing their offensive coordinator potentially and it's just like it's it's mostly funny to me more than anything else it's just like can we like one time can we go in there and just have it be normal like have have our established uh line of questions frankly that would be like almost exclusively uh positive given the way the offseason has gone <laughs> for ohio state but no we can't even do that because now we have this bill o'brien thing lo- looming over everything as we wait for resolution there yeah and the reason that i'm calling it weird is because it is so unusual it is not because i think that it's problematic or that ohio state is unable to overcome this if bill o'brien leaves because essentially we're talking about the same pool of candidates still being available to them mm-hmm. i mean m- minus maybe uh, Liam Cohen, who has taken that offensive coordinator job, left Kentucky to go to Tampa Bay. Like, if Bill O'Brien gets that job and you want to reconnect with the same people that we talked about before, I mean, Brian Johnson is not with the Eagles. He's probably more available than he was uh, a month ago uh, when we were first talking about him as a candidate. Jason Candle, if you wanted to go back and, and have another conversation with him, and like, you're ready to move. You also didn't get the Boston College job, which like he is <clears throat> a candidate for that as well. Like maybe this is the move that propels you. I, I know that that's not Ryan Day's preference, and it hasn't been. We've talked about that. Like NFL experience, handing over the offense, working with quarterbacks is all a plus. <clears throat> so that wouldn't change. But it's still Ohio State. It's still deep pockets. They would reasonably be able to get anybody they would want, yeah. which I I guess would I'm. We never really talked about Chip Kelly, and I have a hard time, Bill, getting there in my mind. I know the relationship, how close the Ryan Day and Chip Kelly are. I know the experience and the offensive acumen that Chip Kelly has. The and even like when I say this, like, well, you don't want to pay the buyout of one and a half million, which is what it was. I looked after we kicked that around on Monday. I think at Roosters, like. You're probably talking about three and a half million dollars then to hire Chip Kelly. And on the surface, you say, well, Ohio State can afford that. But that's still not like the way that they the school itself generally operates. Like that would register as a surprise to me if they if it got to that point, which again, we're talking about the hypotheticals. I've already gone down another tangent on this. Like I don't know how much sense he honestly makes. Um yeah. I'd I would have to I would have to get a, you know, 
an explanation, I, I suppose, from a lot of different people. Because you understand maybe why that would connect, but like the Chip Kelly and Justin Fry stuff, like are they just getting like the band back together here? And is it was it kind of <laughs> all that successful, you know, together the first time? Like I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think well, one like the the money portion of it is interesting because we're talking about a program at Ohio State that was probably slowest among the power programs resourced well enough to pay assistance a million dollars to actually do it. Um, and they clearly they do it now. They have a few on the staff, but when they, I think it was Greg Schiano was the first in 2018. It was like a, a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A, su- a celebration, a sea change. It was a sea change. It was a sea <laughs> oh, okay. change. Thank you. Change. Thank you. It's right on the tip of my tongue. A sea change <laughs> uh, in the way that Ohio State handles business um, with its assistant coaches. And like now it's nothing. And and I don't think the reaction to paying 1.5 million dollars to potentially buy Chip Kelly out of his contract and then pay him presumably between two and three million dollars to be your offensive coordinator um, would be shocking in today's climate and what coaches make, but it would be a step beyond, I think, what Ohio State has been comfortable doing um, to this point. But I also think that's it, that, that that in itself is like also a unique situation, right? It's not like you're signing yourself up for doing that in perpetuity, but um, part of me feels like clearly Chip Kelly wants out of UCLA um, and probably because UCLA like threw out a trial balloon in the middle of the season. Like, Hey, what would you think if we fired him? And then they beat USC and kind of couldn't do it. Um, but he, I think he wants out of that job and that's been well known for a while. And we know the price tag to, to get him to leave there. Um, I think if Ryan day wanted chip Kelly or chip Kelly was his first choice, then, then he would be the offensive coordinator at Ohio state. Um, and he's not like Ryan day picked bill O'Brien. And I also wonder like, you know, they, they hired Bill O'Brien and the thing we've said a lot, which was, you know, told to us is that Bill O'Brien is not coming to revamp the offense. He's coming to run Ryan Day's offense. And I understand that Ryan Day speaks a lot of the same language as Chip Kelly. Um, but I also don't see Chip Kelly as a guy who would go anywhere and to be handed an offense. Like he would want to go do do his own stuff. Even even if a lot of it is similar to what Ryan Day does, I, I think he would want probably more autonomy then Ryan Day is probably willing to give up to that position, even to someone as experienced as, as Bill O'Brien. I think Ryan Day believes that he has an offense that works here and just kind of wants to let somebody else you know, cook cook with the ingredients. Um, so I don't I don't know that Chip Kelly would be necessarily a fit in that regard either. But you're also in a weird time. Like if it came to it, maybe you fall back on that familiarity. Um, but I think it would be more likely that he would go to like like a Brian Johnson maybe or. A Jason Candle, you make a good point about Jason Candle. Like, if you don't get the BC job out of Toledo, like, then you, then is that the final the final straw for you to actually leave a head coaching job for a Power Five coordinator position because you just don't think you're going to get there from Toledo? Um, I think that's actually less about Toledo and more about Jason Candle if that's the case. <laughs> but but I'm sure he would probably view it that way if he ends up not getting that job. We know enough Toledo fans to be yeah. like. They're like, yeah, it makes sense why he doesn't have it. We don't want him either. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't an impediment for Matt Campbell, I guess. Let's just say that. Yeah, and and he he escaped anyway. So I thought about that because I, I was like, there's going to be some recency bias, like even going into it. Like, is this the weirdest one? Probably not the weirdest press conference, weirdest situation that I've covered in 12 years. Ohio State has them a lot, which got me thinking. Well, that that could be a product of like the amount of attention that's on this program. But when you mentioned like, well, this is going to be like five in a row. I mean, post Michigan after a loss, that's that's just part of business. Like that, that's yeah. uncomfortable and nobody likes it. It's not fun. A week and a half later, I remember us doing snap judgments after Selection Sunday. Me like, well, that was a very bizarre way to handle a <laughs> press conference and and pretty out of character, I would say, for Ryan Day. It was like, and and you can maybe understand why because a good chunk of that was about Kyle McCord and he couldn't answer it as truthfully as he may have wanted to. Mm -hmm. But then you add in the experience at the Cotton Bowl, the signing day stuff in between. Well, the the Cotton Bowl one too, like I forgot, I forgot, I was reminded of this as you said it, like the the joint head coach press conference before the Cotton Bowl was like, was, was like, mostly normal other than Eli Drinkwitz basically <laughs> explaining to Ryan Day why he had to give up play calling as <laughs> Ryan yeah. Day was sitting right next to him. I, I lumped it together. It was the week of the Cotton Bowl that was like also still odd. Um, and then now this where I'm just like, maybe I'll be wrong, just anticipating it just being like, 
I don't know, um, being beating a dead horse and like not getting any actual development or information out of it. Because again, there'll be like an understandable limit on the things that Ryan Day can say, no matter what. I mean, he can talk about the decision to hire Bill O'Brien and his intentions for the role, but like all that stuff may be moot by the time he's finished talking. Who knows what's going to transpire, what Boston College wants to do. So I guess it, when you look at the totality of the last like two months, do you think that we're treating Ryan Day unfairly as a collective <laughs> entity in the media? Like, I, or is it actually like this is what happens when the seat gets warm and like everybody knows that this is year six and it, it, he knows it, we know it. This is a critical year. You have to get every decision right, and there's going to be extra scrutiny on that when maybe that wouldn't have existed in year three or four. First time you lose to Michigan, whatever. Like, I don't know. Do you? And I'm not just talking about like you, me, Berm, or Doug. Um, and and we don't. Maybe we should only look at it that way. Like, are we? Are we taking too close of a look at at small things like the special teams coordinator? Like, is it? unfair criticism do you do you do you think that at all with the way that we're approaching this offseason no no i don't i don't think so i i think um i think ohio state is probably used to people being hypercritical about everything that that happens um with with the program and that's just i think kind of the cost of doing business and sometimes it probably does feel unfair but i i don't know I don't know that the scrutiny of the last um it's not even this offseason i would say probably of like the last uh 18 months or so um is is unfounded right because because ohio state and ryan day tell us every year what the goals are and for the last three they haven't accomplished them so like in, in that world then no I, I i think everything is up for questioning everything should be hyper hyper scrutinized um there's a way i guess to scrutinize while being fair but i, I think that by and large, we've kind of struck that balance. So, no, I don't. I, I think like <clears throat> we hyperanalyze things, right? Like we're talking about like the weirdness of press conferences, and like is that really important? <laughs> no, but I think it's like kind of fun to talk about, especially this time of year when there's not much else going on. It's like can we can we remove ourselves from kind of the emotion of things and just acknowledge like this is kind of funny that it's happening um, <laughs> so often that there's just always like a little weird morsel here and there that to distract us a little bit. Like I I kind of think that's funny, but. Um, in terms of like things that are actually impactful to Ohio State's on-field success and the questioning of that, no, I, I don't. I don't think anything has really been unfair. Um, it comes with the territory in some regard, but I also think that when you are as um, kind of bold and out there with the lofty goals as Ohio State is, and then you so often come up short of them, um, then you open yourself up to this. Yeah, I feel the same way, and like clearly the. You can't speak for every single member of the Ohio State fan base, and if they disagree with the way that we do things, you know, I certainly listen to uh, constructive criticism there. But like the reason that we look at, all right, what are you going to do with the tenth spot? I've been at places where most of the fan base cannot tell you who all ten coaches on the staff are, or <laughs> nine, if it was as where it was earlier. Like, yeah. you know, and and for some parts of the Ohio State fan base, like they're not going to worry about it beyond Ryan Day. And maybe the coordinators. Clearly, that's not the kind of people that you know we think that we're speaking to on a daily basis. Like the 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 diehard Ohio State fan that is ingrained in this, they they want a comprehensive look in the, at the program. And like we spend 365 days talking about Ohio State. And if they said, you know what, I was got it sweet. Like <laughs> if we could just be eight and four every year, like cool. Then I guess we wouldn't worry about Parker Fleming or what what you're going to do with the last spot now that he's gone like it, it, i think our coverage is dictated both by the response and passion of the fan base and also the program itself saying that this is what we expect to be held to and if that's what they say like it's got to be a 10 out of 10 and we see something that in our estimation our evaluation is less than a 10 out of 10 like well we're going to ask about it yeah um, <laughs> If the pro if the program says like you know what we're going to strive for eight out of ten and then the fan base says okay then we'll change but I don't yeah. think that's going to happen probably soon Ohio now, State Ohio State fans care way too much uh, and are way too smart I think for that to ever be the case now that would be a weird Wednesday 
<laughs> if we get a, a bunch of people telling us as we go up to the Woody, like, you know what? Don't care about national championships. Don't care about the Big Ten. If we can beat Michigan every once in a while, be cool with that. Like, not anticipating that anytime soon. So, no. you know, and that's that's great. Like, that's the reason that we're doing what we do and uh, why there is a podcast daily on February 7th, which I guess there would have been something anyway. It's National Signing Day. Did you know that? Who who cares about that part? I mean, isn't it weird how like how quickly this day became irrelevant? Totally I guess we should have seen, seen it coming, but like for if they've been doing this that long, like no one cares about this day anymore. I mean, I remember what the coverage demands were like six years ago. Like you had to be up at six o'clock in the morning to start this day, and like it could go all day long, and you were going to spend multiple hours, you know, in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. Like the classes were. You hope that they were done by nine, like no drama. And then the fax machine's done worrying and you talk to multiple coaches and it's like celebration for the program in February. Hey, we're talking football again. Now it's like, we're it's get ready for March time. And like, where are the other coaches? What? <laughs> it's it's the preview to the preview for spring ball now that it's more, more so than anything else, which is fine. Like we're glad to have the opportunity to ask Ryan day questions. And I guess like they've, they have been more active on this day than, than they are right now. Um, and I suppose if you factor in the transfers, right, then it, it feels like a little more of a signing day because Ryan Day hasn't had an opportunity to really talk about any of them. But um, as we said, the, the Bill O'Brien-ness of it all might might take away from some of those discussions, unfortunately. Yeah, that's my concern. I hope it doesn't uh, get completely hijacked because I'm trying to start the feud with Lane Kiffin later on today, which yeah, is... Right. You know, we got to have a little fun in there. And I, I hope that there's time for that. Or I guess the alternative is Jerry can just let Ryan Day stand up there for two and a half hours until we are. Oh, well, we can't do that. There's a women's basketball press conference at 1030 in the same room. Oh, oh that's right. <laughs> Very important. Well, you asked for more women's basketball talk <laughs> on the podcast daily. So now you're going to get it. They are you're deserving of the spotlight. They are. You're staying in there to ask Kevin McGuff questions, and then you're going to have a solo snap judgments snap on what judgments on the women's hoops. Yeah, yeah. That'll so let's be just, terrible. Well, yeah. Let's just see what happens. Instead, I bet what we're, we're going to talk about afterwards is like how we still don't know what's going on with Ohio State's offensive coordinator. But we're going to try and learn a lot more later on with uh, an appearance in the Woody on a Wednesday. Firm is going to be there with us. Doug will be there. We're going to have a lot of content uh, coming your way on the podcast as we. Hear from Ryan Day and move forward. A couple interviews in the works as well through for later in the week that we hope that you're going to enjoy. Uh, until then, we appreciate you starting off this Wednesday with us on the Podcast Daily. He's Bill Landis, and I'm Austin War. We will talk to you later.